Um, return yards in, in terms of the punt game, mm -hmm. pretty high. How do you look at that? Is it, is it more of a, a coverage thing? Is it uh, you know I know Stonehouse has the long punts. Is he giving you enough hang time? How mm -hmm. do you how do you factor those? Yeah, in that particular it? phase, we, we got to be complementary, and it you know starts with protecting. Um, you know, something that we've improved as, as the season's gone on. Um, you know, Stoney doing a good job getting the ball up in the air and giving our gunners a chance to make plays. And, and then in coverage, you know, we, we, we got to get down the field. So, um, you know, this particular, you know, time, we, we, we got to get better. We, we are giving up a lot of, a lot of yards. Um, Stoney's doing a good job getting the ball down the field. Um, certainly he's got to improve his hang time and, and um, something he's working on. And I, I know um, he's going to get better at. Is that coming still with his return? Or, or is he, in terms of health, is he fully – back and, and the hang time is just just not there yet or? yeah it, it's it's a few different things you know you know him speeding up the operation you know worrying about rush a little bit uh you know you could say injury a little bit but he, the way he hits the ball in practice is unbelievable um so now we just got to transfer what he's doing in practice to the games are you a big directional punt guy in terms of wanting guys to wanting stoney to kick it coffin corner that sort of thing because you know, his big, the strong leg that he has would seem to be more advantageous to, you know, hit it as high as far as you can. Yeah, there's there's certain parts of the, parts of the game where you're looking to flip the field. Um, you know, we go direction middle. Um, but certainly, uh, we're looking to get the ball outside the numbers, uh, give our gunners a chance to make the play, and, and then, you know, shrink, shrink the rectangle, so to speak, and make them play in a, a smaller field. What are some areas he needs to keep getting better? Uh, you know, I keep saying he's just a mature individual. Um, you know, the trust we have in him, uh, he, he makes great decisions, uh, takes care of the ball. Ultimately, that's that's his number one job is is uh, take care of the ball and get it back to our offense, and he's done a good job. But uh, he, he's he's getting better. Um, he's seeing the big picture. Uh, we, we're going to continue to dial up some returns for him, and uh, one of these days he's going to bust one. Kick returns to take it out when he feels he we, should. We, we have certain rules as far as depth, uh, obviously, in the kick, um, the conditions, who we're playing. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we just have rules, and he, he's done a good job managing that play for sure. You guys have uh, 8.2 yards per return on the punts, and you're talking about how Jaquan is continuing to progress, but sometimes it feels like he goes more east to west than mm -hmm. getting north. Is that something in that process, trying to get him to maybe hit one of those holes by getting north? Is that something in your coaching process that you're trying to get him to develop on some of these plays? Yeah, there's there's certain returns where he's going to get lateral to get vertical. Um, there's 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 times and he'll, he'll agree with me where he should put plant like you said plant his foot in the ground and get vertical, um, you know with those return yards too we, we got to do a better job um, being penalty free we're, we're we're giving up yards in that in that phase and we got to be disciplined um, you know just coaching the fundamentals and, and, and preaching that and, and make sure, sure guys understand that hey these are costing us yards that ultimately are affecting field position so um, you know Q's going to continue to get better and we have the utmost faith in him and um, like where he's at. What's the week, I guess, been like for you this week? Uh, I know Brian said yesterday you could try to trend towards um, going with Mason again. How do you divide the reps and try to help Will progress, even though he's not getting as many reps? Yeah, so Will took a couple of reps yesterday. Uh, didn't really throw very much. He'll take a few more today, but Mason's going to get the lion's share, depending on you know Will having some sort of miraculous jump, feeling a lot better. He's still just really kind of fighting some soreness and things like that. So uh, it'll be mostly Mason for today, and that's how it's going to kind of go. So he'll take the lion's share of the reps. Regardless of who's back there, it, it seems like, you know, every game, if you look at, like, coaches take, there's mm -hmm. four or five plays where guys are wide open. Oh, yeah. And the reads are there. Like, how can you get these quarterbacks to see that, deliver it, and execute the way it needs to happen? You know, Mason did a good job in the first half, especially. He had a couple of those guys and really got the ball out on time. He had the third down to Tyler, which is a pretty tight window throw. And so those reads, you know, he's hitting those ones quick. It's kind of a consistency deal of just hitting it every time. And, you know, the other one was where we end up getting the sack fumble. You know, they end up playing man coverage, and they kind of kept adding on, adding on. And you know, that's kind of experience with Mason, and he's got to – kind of speed up his process and hit him on that one where Ridley's kind of running wide open for an explosive gain. And instead of being an explosive gain for us, which would have been a 20-yard gain for us, it ended up being a 20-yard loss. And avoiding those plays are really kind of the difference for us between being really good offense and just being where we are right now. How much can, how much can uh, Will being forced to sit and stand up on the sideline and watch 
maybe help him in terms of his understanding of how the routes are unfolding and, and being able to process things? Well, Will's been doing a great job, you know, kind of switching roles with Mason of really being supportive and kind of a second set of eyes after every play. So, you know, Will stands right back there every snap. And I do think it's kind of now that he's been able to step away from it, get to see it slow down. Okay, this is what I would do. This is how I would go with this. Okay, I look at that safety rotation went that way. Oh, that's what I would do. So there's a lot of benefit to that. And uh, we'll see, hopefully it translates when he comes back that he can kind of play faster and kind of just have a, a cleaner processing mentally. But he's been doing a great job and he's still preparing like he's the starter, you know, and he'll get there when he comes back and whenever he's back. Brian kind of indicated that some of the run defense stuff that you saw dictated you change your, your approach. A little bit. Meanwhile, so meanwhile, next gen stats. You familiar with them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So bit. next gen stats said that Pollard didn't face a single uh, stack box in that game. So how, how do we square those two things? Uh, I mean, I would say the stat. You know, there's the one coming out second drive of the third quarter. It was first and ten, and we ended up handing it to Tony on the left side, and they brought that will free safety blitz into that. That's a pretty stacked box. So there was there were certainly eight guys on that one where we ended up losing three and got behind the chains. So. Yeah, I, you know, I, I know next gen stats, sometimes they have different maybe models, but there was certainly a lot of people around the line of scrimmage. If there's any uh, silver lining, I guess, to DeAndre getting traded, does that in some ways force Will or, or whoever's playing quarterback to, to kind of increase the connectivity with, with other receivers like, like Calvin and the rest? Yeah, the good thing for Mason is that Mason's been, you know, really been going with all these guys and then some of these guys that are going to get moved up, you know, whether it's Mason Kinsey or Bryce Oliver and, you know, Nick Westbrook been taking some of the scout team reps too at times. So he's got a really good relationship with those guys and all those guys were here all at training camp. So uh, we feel pretty good about those guys stepping in pretty seamlessly, but. Correct. Yeah. So when Will gets back, you know, but again, DeAndre missed all the camp again. So it's like he's got a lot of reps with these guys and none of these guys are kind of off the street. They've all been around, been in the program for a while. So we expect them all to kind of hit the ground running. Are there examples from the Buffalo game where it was noticeable to you that Mason didn't have those practice reps? We hear so much about the stuff mattering in the film room, but just yeah. how important is it that he's getting those reps this week? It's really important because uh, last Wednesday he didn't take a ton. He didn't. They really split him and Will. And then Thursday, Will took a majority of them before we kind of decided he wasn't going to go. So for him, just seeing it more and more and more. And even though he's a veteran guy, there were definitely a couple of examples, especially on third down. You know, he ended up getting more of the third down reps. So those first couple third downs, those are the exact reps that Mason got in practice. Those translated over to the game. And then kind of as the game went on, you saw we're – you know, we get 60, 70 plays down the call sheet. There's He hadn't had as many turns at some of those, and some of them were game plan looks against Buffalo, and he hadn't gotten them all full speed because he can't get them all. So there was definitely as the game went on in that third and fourth quarter, you saw he didn't have as many of those reps. What do you feel like has been kind of the disconnect with Calvin in terms of being able to really be have a productive day like you want and like he wants? Yeah. You know, there's – we were on our way to having a decent one when he, you know, he had the one drop. And I think he's just, I think we're all pressing. I think he's pressing. I think we were pressing to get him the ball, you know, against Indy. We kind of some of those targets that he did get, maybe they shouldn't have gone to him and he could have moved on. And I think we're all just kind of feels like for the first time, we've all kind of taken a deep breath and just let's let the ball go where it goes. He'll get open. If he's open, we'll throw it to him. If not, you know, and then he got open on that bench route on their sideline and he just didn't come down with it. And, so it just feels everybody's trying to force it too much, right? So let's just take a step back and kind of sit, let it all happen naturally. The one pass uh, that it looked like Ridley was headed off towards the sideline mm -hmm. and the ball was well behind him, was it missed? Quarterback, all, quarterback just missed him. You know, he just kind of sat there and kind of late in the game and he didn't take as good of a drop as we'd wanted. We wanted to get a little bit more depth away. So kind of felt the rush and then he just kind of ended up sailing it over him. But yeah, as it, Calvin was in the right spot and Mason just knows he needs to hit him. How about the one earlier where Calvin kind of slowed and dropped his hand? Yeah, it was that, that one, you know, the wind, it was so windy going that way. The wind kind of took it a little bit that way. So again, that's just time on task with those guys kind of getting those, but they're, uh, they're working hard at it and we, we think they're gonna all pop here at some point. Do you see anything technical? With the drops with him, or is no, it just kind of focused? Not really, just kind of a little bit. 
it seems to be something a little different every time. Nothing totally, nothing totally good. Put your thumb on. Some of the guys have mentioned how like you're getting different looks than expected. Mm -hmm. Were you sitting up in the box looking down? Is that the same thing that, that that you're seeing? Yes, I think we're getting much more man coverage than people are getting. We're getting people want to stop the run. Right, so we're getting loaded boxes. You know, I know next gen's not totally into that, but we're getting single high. You know, Buffalo didn't play very much single high before our game, and then they brought every first play of the drive. They brought the free safety. They brought the free safety blitz to the weak side every time because they didn't want to have two open edges. So that's kind of was their plan, which they hadn't done that in a year, pretty much. So we're seeing some different looks, and then we've got to be able to adjust. So some of that's simplifying some plays and kind of just saying. You know these, so we can block them into all the different looks, rather than we think we're always going to get quarters. This is how they've played bunch the whole time. So that's kind of been a focus for us this week. Of okay, what could they do if that's their plan? Is always to kind of load load it up on us and try to stop the run. Those times where you do get like you mentioned the safety mm -hmm. blitz, yeah. now all of a sudden the box is loaded. Mm -hmm. hey, how do you guys go about making that adjustment to the adjustment? So there was two. So you know we got the play to chig right. So we end up throwing that played a chig into the boundary right so we end up play action and up sending the back right to that guy in the play action which was a good one and then uh we had the other one where we ended up getting the d hop got the defensive holding same thing so now that free safety is kind of losing that area because he's now blitzing so we had an area to attack so that was kind of we ended up getting two good plays off of that and we missed a third one uh, a little later so that was kind of the adjustment on the fly as what we were getting how much are you having to kind of as you guys put the game plan together, kind of adjust maybe away from what you want to do because with the problems they've been having on the right side of the line, being able to block things up long enough for those plays to work. Yeah, there's a that's goes into almost every play. We're thinking about protection first, so protection's number one. If we can't protect it, we really can't throw it, right? So if that guy's going to be in a one-on-one -on -one situation and we got a big deep drop down the field, it's probably not real advantageous for us. Um, you know, and then if you're always chipping and helping the right side, it always affects the spacing and kind of distribution of the routes. So all that factors into pretty much every every pass and pr almost all our run formations too, because they all going to marry up. We don't want to be just we're always got this look when we're going to pass it and help the right side or help the left side or do those things. So it's really kind of been a concentrated effort from everybody to make sure it all looks the same. Odukoya and the DMR been doing in terms of practice squad progress. How they how they looked. They've been doing great. You know they uh, uh, Tommy O got us first, got in the first game the other day, and you know it's just hard to play four tight ends. You know get so we'll see when, when he gets up again. Uh, but he's been doing a great job, kind of really taking that Y spot and kind of growing that way. And then DMR is doing just kind of the same things we all saw during training camp. And I know those guys are anxious to uh, whenever they get their chance. Ron Baker. Uh, Jerome, you know, throughout his career, he's been a guy that, you know, he, he sideline to sideline. He's a tough guy. Um, he can cover in space. You know, he brings some explosiveness. Um, he'll be a good good piece to try to fit into the defense. You know, when you get to this time of year where guys are starting to, to get traded, now you got a locker room and guys thinking, you know, maybe we'll work on next. Do you address that with your guys? Do you feel like you need to? I mean, it's part of the National Football League. You know, in the National Football League, the only people that own the seats are the owners, right? So those seats are revolving door. As long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, you take care of your responsibility, you play as hard as you can. When you're out there, you don't worry, you don't worry about that. And then if someone gets traded, it's next man up. That's why you're preparing. That's why we coach. That's why we coach the way we, we, we coach and, and try to prepare these players to play. So whoever's out there, there is no excuse, all right? And it's our objective to coach them and, and try to get wins. Baker, somebody that you can plug and play, can fill that void earnestly just behind, or do you revert to Gibbons here for a little bit? Well, we'll see how it plays out. I mean, he just got off a flight from Seattle this morning. You know, um, he's been in the same defense, obviously coming very similar terminology coming from Seattle. Um, so some of the stuff is is a lot different in terms of terminology, but I think you, if you can make it as, as same as, you know, he'll be able to pick it up, but we'll see how it goes. Today was the first day he's been in the building, and. We'll move from there. Darryl Baker uh, do uh, on Sunday, and if he's a guy kind of for a while moving forward, what's your confidence level like in him? Well, I thought he played well. You know, he was provided an opportunity, and uh, no one's better than the opportunity. He made the best of it. You know, he made some plays when he needed to make some plays. Uh, he was fa he was sound. He was disciplined in his job responsibility. 
and you know we'll see we'll see how he handles it this week. You know, every week it's a new opponent. Um, they present different problems, and you got to be up for the challenge. But I was pleased with the way he played last week. Would suggest, I guess, that, that Jeffrey Simmons isn't having as much impact in the pass rush mm -hmm. as he had before. Is that does that resonate with you, or, or is that a misleading stat? What, what do you? Uh, I think it could be a misleading stat. You know, when you look at teams against us, the ball comes out pretty quick. Um, it's getting spit out real quick. We get teams. We play a game where we're getting a lot of get back on track situations, or we're getting a lot of tackle for losses, and they're trying to either run the ball or get the ball to get the yardage back. Um, you know, I think also I need to pressure a little bit more in spots to try to, try to create some more one and ones uh, with those guys. But you know, he's been where he's supposed to be. He's doing his job. You know, he's been that that anchor in the middle of the D line, and you know, I'm pleased where he's at. Jeff can do. I guess adding. That uh, pressure you mean adding guys yeah, to the rush? Yeah, yeah. probably adding guys to the rush. Yep. Seems like Jeff can do no wrong in the eyes of anyone here. You, you watched film of him in the past. Mm. Wasn't he significantly more impactful previously? Well, I think, you know, Jeff's also had an injury as well, you know. But I think Jeff's doing his job. He's playing within the framework of the defense. I'm happy where he's at. Um, can everybody on the defense, including coaches, do more? Yes. All right. But that's anybody in their profession. But where he's at, he's playing sound football. He's stoned in the run. It's hard to run in the interior line uh, against us. And, um, you know, we all got to find our touches. Him rushing is it, just it isn't him. It's everybody working as one. So when everybody works at one, you get one-on-ones, you get opportunities. And then when you look at it from a big picture standpoint, everybody slides to Jeff. The slide goes to him. So when you look at it from, from that standpoint, he's the one that's getting the double teams. OK, so you got to you got to understand that as well, because he's the bell cow the, on, on the defensive line. Is for their offensive line and then Montgomery and Gibbs are maybe the best tandem backs in the league. But what's it going to take for your unit, especially up front, to kind of slow that part of the game down? We got to play our brand of football. We got to set set edges. We got to get vertical knockback. We got to fit where we're supposed to be. We got to play our primary gaps. And when they run the ball, we got to make him. We got we got to tackle uh, with power. You got to get low against those backs. They're extremely good. They have great uh, contact balance. So we got to play our style of football. You know, you know, we're going up there, and, and it's a very good team. All right, but we know we we have a really good defense as well. So we got to play our game. When you talk about teams getting the ball out fast against you, is there anything that you can do as a defense to make teams not want to do that, or is that just something that the offense controls? I mean, the offense has the ball, so they can control what they want to control. Um, the ball gets out fast, but it also plays in our favor as well. We don't give up a lot of passing yards. Um, when they pass the ball, we sticky on contact, so we make them earn it. You know, So they can get it out, but are they willing to matriculate the ball down the field for 80 yards? Some really good run defense. Mm -hmm. What can he do? Maybe enhance his pocket push and be more effective. Well, that just come that comes with time, and he's he's making a conscious effort of getting better, trying to win the one on ones when he gets an edge. Um, you know, that's a big big thing for this week uh, for him is, you know, dominating the A and B gaps. If the slide goes away from him, winning on the edge and, and affecting the quarterback in the middle of the pocket. Indicated maybe give Cedric one more week, make a decision on him next week. What, what have you seen from him since he's been here? Maybe since he came back. Well, you know, Cedric, he's he, he's a, he's a student of the game. You know, he's trying to pick up everything. But like everybody else, I've never seen Ced play with pads on this year. So you know, he's out there training, and if the opportunity presents itself for him to play, he has to be ready for it. But you know, he didn't get any plays or any full padded uh, uh, contact during the off season. So, you know, we'll wait to see if his opportunity comes. We got to be, we got to have him prepared and he has to go out there and perform. When you guys talk about complimentary about. football, you have a top defense, lots of three and outs they're getting off the field, but how realistic is it for that to translate over to the offense and have an effect there? When we go out there, no matter what's the situation, we got to line up and play football. We got to line up and play. And if, you know, one of the things, if, if, if we're getting stops, we got to keep getting stops. It's no excuses. For us, it's about the discipline for 60 plus minutes of football. And if we play disciplined football for 60 plus minutes, we're pretty good defense. You guys have done a really good job of kind of stopping the bleeding a lot this year, like whether it's been after a turnover mm -hmm. or not letting too many scores. What do you think was different in that second half against Buffalo that 
you know, seem to spiral. Yeah, I think, you know, after coming out in the halftime, you know, we played extremely well in the first half. Honestly, we gave up two plays. You know, you look at it, they had 90 yards. If we stayed disciplined in coverage, we, they probably would have had 30. Um, so, you know, we felt good about what we were doing coming out. And, you know, one thing happened, led to another, and we kind of got on our heels. And that's where, you know, me talking to the defense, it's about bad things are going to happen, but can you slow your heartbeat down? Can you calm down? Can you just focus on the next play? I think that we kind of got a little bit uh, out of sync, right, trying not to mess it up instead of just playing good football. And I think it kind of spiraled a little bit after that. Um, but guys learned from, from their mistakes. You know, we had some guys that didn't play as well. They learned from it because you never really fail in, in, in anything you do. You just learn from it. And I think that even though we lost the game, it's going to make a lot of people better going forward on how to handle adversity, how to settle in when things get tough, how to refocus, rededicate on the little things, because those, those are the things that's going to get you through the game. Being the second time, there was a mix-up in coverage. Mm -hmm. You know, Coleman had the big play the mm -hmm. week before was something else. Mm -hmm. But I know you talk about obnoxious communication. Was that a communication issue? On the, on the, on the, uh, the first explosive? The Yeah, the 44-yarder Coleman had. Well, what happened was we were in thirds, and Jarvis came off. Jarvis thought he threw the ball. He thought that the quarterback threw the ball, and he spent off the coverage to go tackle a guy in the, in the flat. But he just has to stay in, worry about his responsibility and stay over the top. Because if he's in the third and he's just playing his responsibility, they don't even throw the ball. And, and you talk about ticks of time. I mean, we were in his face in that moment as well. So it was one of those lapses. It was, you know, a, a young guy trying to make a play instead of just being where he's supposed to be. And uh, those are one of the experiences, you know, for him because everything's brand new for him. And it hurts throughout the course of the game. It hurts when it happens. But if you look at it from a big picture and the development of a young man, he'll be better from those moments.